Thank you all for being here. <laughs> Amazing authors. Love the logo, don't you? <laughs> I think this is probably the largest AA gathering in Lonnie's County since Prohibition. So I'm really proud to see all of you here. It may be that you're afraid to laugh. You live serious lives, you go to work, you you spend some time being miserable. And you may be asking to yourself, what is the secret to comedy? Well, I have it right here. <laughs> this is it. And I know you'd like to see it. And since you're here, I'm gonna show it to you. Would you like to see that again? <laughs> That's it. You've probably seen it on t television too, and I've even heard it, right? The camp laughter. But I do want to make sure you know that as the comedy tour, we're not afraid to use this. <laughs> so, <laughs> Trump, now that, there's another one. Trump, I mean, that was really too young to fully appreciate the demagoguery of George Wallace. So Trump has been very educational for me. I mean, he has insulted women, Hispanics, prisoners of war, and just about every other voting group there is. And yet, he keeps rising in the Republican primaries. I had no idea that the racist voice in the GOP was so strong. Uh, Trump has a compelling Horatio Algier's story, to be sure. <laughs> I mean, he pulled himself up from his bootstraps to become a multi-billionaire, and that must have been hard. It must have been hard to reach his bootstraps because they were covered in the $200 million his father had left him. Uh, well, he must have been severely handicapped with money coming out of his eyes, his mouth, his whatever. Uh, of course. Being so handicapped, you'd think that he might have more compassion for the physically challenged, but you'd be wrong there too. Nor was Trump the only craziness in 2015. On Christmas Day, Phoenix struggled to reach 40 degrees, while in my hometown of Westerly, Rhode Island, it was 69 degrees. I moved to Arizona to escape winter. I mean, what the heck is happening? Uh, not to worry though, if a global warming disaster befalls the world, we still have all the grain that Joseph stored in the pyramids. <laughs> we might have forgotten all about that if it wasn't for Ben Carson. So, I've been taking this new drug. It's called Charlie Sheen. It hasn't cured me of anything yet, but I find myself strangely attracted to a TV show called Porn Stars. <laughs> I'm taking Sheen so I can get used to being a celebrity. I mean, with my new book, The Pirate Prince Carlo Magno, recently released, it's surely only a matter of time before I'm people's sexiest man alive. <laughs> How do you like your new chair, Sarah asked. Meow, replied Tai Tai, a soft fuzzy ball of mischief. His name is Tiger Tiberius, which we often shorten to Tai Tai. While Sarah and I think of Tai as our beloved son, Tiger views us as those pests that won't leave my house. <laughs> Whoa, Tiger, I interrupted. You have your own chair. This one is Daddy's. <laughs> Meow, Tai Tai said with a look in his eyes that seemed to say, we'll see about that, chubby. <laughs> I'm not saying that Tiger is spoiled, but before my new chair arrived, he had the most comfortable chair in the house, padded with his own yellow blanket decorated with little doggies. He also has three cat beds, several blankets of his own, numerous birds and mice that either squeak or are filled with catnip, and the, only the special flavors of cat food that he's willing to eat. Oh, and every day about 5 p.m., Tiger Tiberius leaps up onto his own place on the counter and meows to let us know he's ready 
for his daily bowl of whipped cream. Oh. It's ready whip, extra creamy. He refuses to eat any of that cheap stuff. <laughs> Talk about spoiled. Tai Tai makes demands on us that most cats don't. For example, he enjoys the occasional olive. Uh, he likes nibbling corn off the cup. And I discovered by accident, he likes McDonald's sweet tea. <laughs> but don't set seafood in front of him. He'll sniff it and turn his back in protest. Ty's the first cat I ever met that won't touch seafood. Well, I should say won't eat seafood. He will touch it sometimes. He likes batting shrimp around the room. No matter how often I tell him, don't play with your food. <laughs> so that's our Mr. Fuzzyhead. Sarah Pimp is Ty, and I like to pretend to be a grouch, but I can't resist petting him and slipping him treats when Sarah isn't looking. I can't let her know that I'm crazy about Tiger, too, or, or that cat will completely run our lives. <laughs> well, I'm on my way up the mountain and fame, and, and I'm not stopping until I reach the stars. I even have a backup plan. If my book doesn't make me a star, I plan to change my last name to Kardashian. That should get me a reality show at least. <laughs> Thank you for coming tonight. I hope you enjoyed the show. So this is the part that I, I, if people want to share, if you've got questions, if you want to talk about it, if you want to get up and leave because you've got your car running in the parking lot, <laughs> I mean, whatever you're going to do, great, go right ahead. Anything else? What advice do you have for writers coming up in the field? Well, if you write in the same genre that I do, stop now. <laughs> I don't need the competition. Um, you know what? Um, I, I think I was actually like born to write. I mean, the earliest I can remember, that's what I've wanted to do. And I, I tell people that if I was stranded on a deserted island, I would be writing with a stick in the sand on the beach. I mean, just, I love it to, to do it. Um, and I'll tell you that it's not easy. Um, you know, I've got more rejection notices than I can think of. Um, and you just have to believe in yourself because I found through my career, there's a lot of people that are willing to tell you, you know, you can't do this or whatever. and you know, I mean, well, I, I say I'm going to give up writing like, you know, every other week because it's very, you know, tough, but you really have to believe in yourself and keep trying. And you never know when success is going to come along. And, uh, you know, it, it might take a while. I mean, I'm, I'm still waiting. If people think, oh, you've been successful. Um, you know, I overcame being a little bit when I was born, so <laughs> people say, you know, you've been successful, but I'm still waiting for the big break, and um, I actually had um, someone contact me about making one of my books into a movie, the Carlo Magno, the Pirate Prince. It's um, based on a true story of uh, a Native American pirate. He was sold as a slave as a kid, and if you go back in real life, um, I would have been related to him. Um, he was the son of King Philip, and if you know, like, uh, Indian Wars, King Philip's War was one of the earliest ones in the 1675-76 range, and just before that war ended, they captured his son, who was like eight years old. They wanted to kill him so he couldn't grow up to uh, lead a rebellion, but the church leaders stepped in and said, well, you can't kill this kid, he didn't do anything. So the Christian thing was they sold him as a slave into the West Indies, <laughs> and he disappears from history. So I gave him, I gave him a life, and um, so I'm hoping that that you know it does end up becoming a movie um, because I'd like to see it. Support this and other great podcast content at our Patreon page, www.patreon.com forward slash Artways. Tomaquag Arts programs are sponsored by. The Rhode Island State Council on the Arts. Investment in arts and culture. Music presented by Eagle and Hawk. www.eagleandhawk.com <laughs>